Hi class, so this is part two of our epithelial tissue. We've already gone through this. This is, this is where we kind of left off. What I'd like to do is have you, since you have your worksheet, your lab worksheet in front of you, correct? You have a notebook in front of you, correct? With your colored pencils. Let's do some simple drawings. And this will help cement these terms into your brain. So we are going to draw. See if I can do this. We are going to draw a squamous cell, a flat cell. So just kind of do boom, boom, boom. This is so bad. And I'm going to add my a nucleus, which should be kind of like this. So pretend we have three cells here, three squamous cells together. Remember, these cells have no space in between them. The squamous cells are flat. Their nuclei are flattened. So that's that's basically what a uh, um, simple. This is simple squamous right here. Now cuboidal. So these are going to be cube shaped. So I'm going to try to draw. Oops, maybe three, three cubed shaped. Let's see how I can do do this. Hopefully these are going to look like cubes. So cu cuboidal, these are cubed shaped cells. What you need to know, the nucleus is centered and it's nice and round. So your, your cuboidal cells, their nucleus is in the center, nice and round. Now columnar, column shaped. Okay, one more time. Let's try to do this, these columnar cells. I'm using my trackpad, so this sucks. So let's just do straight, straight down. So now we have our column-shaped cells. What you need, and this is going to be, pretend this is your basement membrane down here. The nuclei of these cells is elongated and it's towards the basal region. So these nuclei are elongated and towards the basal region. So anytime you are looking at these cells, look to the nuclei to give you a hint. Is it a squamous? Is it flat nuclei? Is it cuboidal, a nice round nuclei in the center? Or is it columnar? Are those nuclei long um, in the shape of the columns? They're long, elongated, and they're towards the basal region. So let's get started. I have a feeling I'm going to have to break this into two sections too. We'll probably just start with the simple ones and then we'll move on to the stratified ones. So let's start with our simple squamous. So this is some textbooks, how they draw it. So here you can see this dark thing down here is the basement membrane. This is your simple squamous. Here's the flattened nuclei here. They're showing it here. And this is just a single layer of cells. And these are going to be making um, sheets of, of cells. So here's another drawing, but hopefully you can appreciate what simple squamous looks like. And we're going to start with simple squamous that you find in the lungs. So in the lungs, there are structures called alveoli that you really don't need to know that name yet. But this is where gas exchange is taking place. 
So we are going to have these alveoli. Here is one alveoli, alveolus right here. There's a bunch of them. If you can, this is a slide of a lung. All these structures that you see here, all these structures are alveoli. You have millions of them in your lungs. Each one of these is surrounded by simple squamous epithelium. Why do you have simple squamous? We want quick diffusion of our gases. There is nothing thinner than simple squamous. So this simple squamous is going to allow quick diffusion of our gases in our lungs. Here's a, a, another picture, a close, a close up, so you can kind of see if we get closer in, here's a, an alveolus right here. Here's an alveolus. So lots of them, but this is all simple squamous. This, what is in this lumen? What is in the lumen here? Air. You're breathing in air and it is coming to these alveoli and we're going to have quick diffusion. We're going to get those gases into some capillaries that are right here that are lining um, these alveoli too. So simple squamous lining these alveoli which are filled with air. So what I wanted to do is I want to go to something called a virtual microscope so you can see what this actually looks like if you were actually in the classroom looking at the lung tissue under a microscope. So here we have a lung slide. So if we are in the classroom, you would get this lung slide, put it under the microscope, and you would start on low magnification. You don't know what you're seeing. You're just starting on low magnification. You put it under there, and you see something like this. Then you would go to higher magnification and higher magnification. And you would start seeing these structures. So you know these are all the air pockets. These are all the places where we're having exchange of gases, diffusion of gases. So in this slide, you can easily go higher and higher magnification. And you kind of get the idea that these are all areas of simple squamous. These are all areas of simple squamous. This is where we are having diffusion of gases. Nothing else looks like that in your body. When you see a slide that looks like this, you know this is from the lung. Nothing else likes that. And in a regular class, I could just show you this slide and say, what organ is this from? you would say this is from the lung. What kind of epithelium is this? This is simple squamous. We're having gas diffusion. This is the lumen of, of the alveolus where we have air. This is the, where the air is going in and it's going to diffuse into the capillaries that are surrounding each alveolus. So hopefully that helps with this one. So remember lung, we have areas of gas exchange and that's gonna be simple squamous. So you saw simple squamous of the lung, the area of the lung we have gas diffusion. So that's one of the functions of simple squamous diffusion and here we're talking about diffusion of gases. Another function is filtration. Now we're going to be looking at the kidney next because the kidney has simple squamous. So the simple squamous of the kidney, and hopefully you are following 
along with your lab manual because I have basically some of these exact same photos. So you should be following along with your epithelial tissue lab manual. Be looking at these. I have information in that lab manual that's testable, some stuff that I put down in there. So make sure you are following along and reading with those that lab manual. So now let's look at the simple squamous of the kidney. So if we were in the classroom, we would be looking at a kidney slide and we'd be trying to find, locate structures that look like this in our kidney slide. Now, the pointer is in this white space right here. This white space is what we will refer to as the lumen. So if we go on higher magnification, magnification, we have one of these structures right here. We're going to get to this structure. Now this, if you've taken physio, you know this is the glomerulus. This is just a bunch of capillaries which are containing blood and we are going to take this blood and filter it. We're going to filter it. We're going to send some of this blood into this white space. And we're going to filter that blood by this simple squamous layer that is covering this structure. We are going to filter this blood and make it into urine. So this simple squamous is basically filtering our blood to make urine. And we're going to send that urine into all these tubules that are surrounding this structure. On this slide, you're going to see lots of simple cuboidal. And we'll be looking at these in a moment. But all these tubules are simple cuboidal. We are sending this filtered blood into these tubules. So let's let's look at this a little bit closer here. This is simple squamous. It is one layer thick. The nuclei are squashed, smashed. Simple squamous facing this free space this lumen. So here I have, oops, here I have that same slide and now we've gone on even higher magnification and now you can see the lumen. This is the simple squamous facing that lumen. It is one layer thick. It, it, these nuclei, which are these dark parts, are smashed, squashed, flattened. So this is the simple squamous. Now we're going to look at a virtual microscope to look at these um, under a virtual micro microscope. So here we have um, our tissue slide. So if we were going to put this under the microscope, you would just start off with something like looks like this. You have no idea where you are. But in class, I would show you where to go. And we're going to go down through here. And then you start seeing these structures that have this white rim around them. See all these guys down here? This is where we want to go. This is where we have those structures called the glomeruli. The glomerulus is this tuft of blood vessels where we're going to be filtering to make urine. So let's just go on higher and higher and see if we can get a good one. You never know until we get there. Doop, here. Well, let's see, what does this one look like? So here we are on high magnification. Here we see a rim of white, the free space. This is going to be our lumen. And can you see the simple squamous? Or if I can go even higher. Oh yeah, I can. Oops. But anyway, 
don't want to screw this up too much for you. Here is the simple squamous that is going around that white space. This is the simple squamous. So this is the simple squamous that's going to be filtering um, the blood, filtering our blood, and we're going to put that into these tubules, all these tubules that are surrounding this structure. Lots of tubules in here. Um, let's see if I can find some good tubules for you. Well, here's some tubules down here. Th these are all going to be simple cuboidal. And we're going to look at simple cuboidal in a moment. But hopefully you can appreciate here is a simple cuboidal. Here is the basement membrane going around. It's a tube. Here is the nice round nucleus. Here is the lumen. And this is where we're going to have our filtrate. Our pre-urine is going to be in these tubules. Lots of simple cuboidal tubules throughout the kidney here. So hopefully, hopefully seeing that virtual microscope, you can kind of get an idea of what would we would be doing in class. We would be looking at for a structure like this and go on high mag to find our simple squamous. Simple squamous in the kidney is filtering that blood, and we're going to be putting it in these tubules. See lots of these kidney tubules, and we're going to hopefully be making urine. So those two types of simple squamous, the ones that are found in the lung, the simple squamous in the lung, we have gas exchange. We have diffusion of gases, the simple squamous in the kidney. We are filtering blood to make urine. Now there are two special types of simple squamous that have their own name. If you hear the word endothelium, endo means inside, this is the simple squamous that lines all the blood vessels in your body. The function of endothelium is to create a frictionless surface for blood to flow over. So here's a good picture where you can see here's a, a, a section. They've done a um, section of this blood vessel and you can see the lining epithelium here. This is a flat nucleus, flat nucleus, flat nucleus, one layer thick. This is the endothelium that is lining our blood vessels. Here is some red blood cells in our red in that tube. You have this exact same picture in your lab manual. So make sure you know what endothelium is. It is the simple it's endothelium is simple squamous, but it is the simple squamous that is lining our blood vessels. The other special kind of simple squamous is mesothelium. Mesothelium is the simple squamous that is surrounding our serous membranes. So where do you find serous membranes? You have the serous membranes around your lungs, around your heart, and your visceral organs of the abdominal cavity. It is a thin membrane, obviously, because it's simple squamous. So what, what um, they do with this mesothelium, they're usually just pulling it off of an organ, say if this was on the lung, they're pulling this visceral pleura because it's being pulled off the lung. It could be visceral pericardium too, or it could be visceral peritoneum. It could be 
any of the serous membranes, but they are just pulling it off and placing it directly on top of a slide. So they are pulling the sheet of mesothelium and putting it directly on top of a slide. So when you would see it in the classroom, it would look like this. This is called a flat mount. They are putting this sheet of simple squamous directly on top of the slide and you are looking down at it in the classroom. So this is a mesothelium flat mount. So when you see this, you can still see this is obviously an epithelial tissue because there is no space in between the cells here. But this is going to be a flat mount of mesothelium. Perhaps some of you have seen the commercial mesothelioma. Call your lawyers if you had mesothelioma. That means it's a tumor of the mesothelium and it's mesothelium of the lungs because these people have been exposed to something that caused cancer in their lungs. So mesothelium, this is the simple squamous that is lining your serous membranes. Next, simple cuboidal. You've we've drawn simple cuboidal. It's very easy to draw. It has a nice round nucleus in the center. So here is a simple cuboidal put in a tube form. Here is the green is showing you the basement membrane that's surrounding it. Here is a picture from the kidney. You kind of saw this in the virtual microscope. This is a slide from our classroom. This is beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Simple cuboidal. Here is the basement membrane around it. Here is the lumen where we're going to have our filtrate that's going to become urine. Here's another beautiful example of simple cuboidal. Here's the basement membrane. Here's the nice round nuclei of the simple cuboidal. Here is the lumen. Isn't that gorgeous? Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So that is simple cuboidal. Simple columnar. Now we kind of drew them. They're tall column shaped cells with an elongated nucleus towards the basal surface. This orange, orangish line is the basement membrane. This is the connective tissue right there. Here's another drawing on its basement membrane, elongated nuclei. Now, we're going to find simple columnar basically throughout the GI tract from the stomach, small intestines, all the way through the large intestines. They're going to, those tubes are going to be lined with simple columnar. Also going to find it in the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes, which are carrying the egg into, it's going to go into the uterus, the fallopian tubes. Now, depending on where we are, we're either going to have microvilli or cilia. If you are in the small intestines, you are going to have microvilli. Why would you want microvilli? What does microvilli give you? It gives you more surface area. None of these are showing you any apical modifications. But microvilli, if you have it, it is going to give you more surface area for absorption. So you're going to have microvilli in the small intestines. Now in the fallopian tubes, you're going to have cilia. What are cilia? 
They're hair-like extensions that are motile. They are going to be moving, whipping in one direction to move that egg that is in the fallopian tube towards the uterus. So always remember, why, why would we use cilia or why would we use microvilli? It depends on the function of that tube and what is in that tube. So let's first start with simple columnar, and this is going to be in our small intestines, in our GI tract. So here we have a picture from our classroom. This is an, another beautiful picture. Here is the basement membrane here. This is all connective tissue. So here we have a basement membrane going all the way around here. This is our simple columnar right here. Look at those beautiful cells. Elongated nuclei. Here is a simple columnar cell, another simple columnar cell, and here is the lumen. This pointer is in the lumen. This is the free space. This is where we, we, we would be having our food and liquid going by these cells. Here is some goblet cells in here. All these white things are goblet cells. So we're going to have goblet cells throughout the GI tract. They're going to be adding protection and they're also lubing the tube, remember? So goblet cells. On this picture over here, this is a close-up. Here is going to be the basement membrane down here. This is connective tissue. Here is our simple columnar cells. Here is a big goblet cell, another goblet cell. And on this magnification, here's the lumen up here. Here's the lumen, this white space. On this magnification, you can kind of see this fuzzy border. This is microvilli. Microvilli are hard to see. You're just going to see a fuzzy looking border. So this is microvilli on, on this sample here. So now I want to take you on um, another virtual microscope to look at these um, simple columnar cells. So here you have a slide. If you were in the classroom, you would put this underneath the microscope and you would kind of see something like this. You have no idea where you are because you don't really know what you're looking for. That's one of the joys of using a microscope. You can figure it out. But since we're not in class, we're going to do this virtually. All this is free space. This is going to be the area where food is being absorbed in the small intestines. You don't know this yet, but this is the outer layer of the small intestines. This is all muscle on the outside. This is the lining epithelium that's going to be in this free space. There's lots of folds in the, the small intestines so we can increase surface area to absorb our food. So let's see what we can find. I'm not sure where we're going to go, but let's just kind of look. See if we see anything promising in here. I'm just slowly zooming in and I know what I'm kind of looking for. What looks promising? This looks promising right here. This white space is going to be a free space and I can kind of see my simple columnar cells lining up right here. So let's just go there. Let's see what we've got.
So this is pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. This is free space. This is our lumen. There's lot. We're going to have simple squamous on both sides of this lumen. This side is a little bit better for you to see. Here is our nuclei of our simple columnar. This is going to be the basement membrane right here. This part right here is going to be your connective tissue layer. Now, if we go a little bit higher, or if it, oh, that's as high as it would go. So, nope, that's as high as it goes. So, this fuzzy border right here is the microvilli. The microvilli, you can't really make out the individual cells, but you can see their nuclei and they're towards the bottom. Remember, this is the basement membrane down here. So this is going to be simple columnar. This has microvilli. Let's see if we look around, if we can see any other areas that are promising. This one just shows a goblet cell here. Here is the fuzzy border. Here's our lumen. Um, here's doo -doo. not great, but we are seeing lots of um, goblet cells in here too. So if we were in the classroom, we'd be messing around with these slides and you'd be looking or long trying to, oops, to try to find the simple columnar. But hopefully you kind of get the idea. Microvilli are not easy to see. I think this is where we started from. Microvilli are not easy to see. They are just this fuzzy, fuzzy line here. So make sure you look at your simple squamous, simple cuboidal, and your simple columnar in your lab manual. I've, I have several pictures for you to look at, so hopefully you can figure these out on a lab practical exam. I will be giving you pretty good pictures, kind of like this. I'm not going to tell you, here's the basement membrane. You should be able just to look at a slide like this or like this and go, this is simple columnar. I just see long elongated nuclei. It's only one cell layer thick. The basement membrane would be somewhere around here. Basement membrane would be somewhere around here. And there's goblet cells intermittently thrown in there. And this fuzzy thing up here is the microvilli. We're going to look at cilia in a little bit. And cilia do not look like microvilli. So we're going to stop this video now. It's about, it's a little over 30 minutes. And then we'll go on to our stratified epithelial tissue.